Yeah. I do. And is that legitimate way of doing it? Is that not bring up other artifacts? Not at all. No, no artifact problems with that. You just bang, bang. I quite often do that so that I can see. And I can see by blowing it up that there's a better white point that I could have picked. And so I'll pick that bit in there. Bang, done. And it's fairly neutral. This is a really good shot. No, that's yeah, so yeah, you can blow it up. You're not going to get artifacts. Um, the way the eyedroppers work, they kind of average a four pixel or six pixel square. I'm not sure exactly which it is, um, but it's pretty good. But you know, it's really quick and easy to try a few different points. Um, don't, get, don't get stuck thinking that these tools are all to be used in one way only. You can do what you like. You know, if you want to make the sky <laughs> white, you pull that out of the sky. It's like, oh, okay. You can get some really interesting looks by just clicking in strange places. So if you want to make the sky, the blue sky the feature, then you can actually pick your white point off the sand. It's a cool day. Pick your white point off the sky. It's a warm day. So, you know, you, you can actually get quick, easy effects out of just eyedroppering around on the screen. Um, it's, it's way more powerful than people think it is. And in this case, I probably would use white because it looked pretty good. And I generally increase the saturation. I bring the saturation right up and it gives me an idea of where the errors are in the chroma. Sometimes when the, the color is really not very saturated or quite natural, you can't see if it's a little bit one way or the other. But if you bring that up full, anything that's wrong will be exaggerated and be really obvious. In this case, there's nothing particularly wrong with that image. Um, once I've done that, I generally bring it back to monochrome because your sense of what correct saturation is disappears. Our eyes are a funny thing. They, our brain and our eyes will adapt to things. Like we don't see color temperature differences. We're not aware of it. You go outside, you don't see everything as blue like film or, or video will show it. Um, for that reason, you need to be aware of the fact that our brain and our eyes are going to overcompensate for all the things that we're doing. Um, for that reason, I'm, I have regular breaks when I'm grading. I go outside and I look at natural colours and come back in. Bef before I do a review after a grade, I'll go outside, I'll wait five or ten minutes, let my eyes, eyes adjust to reality, come back in and watch the program. Anything that's not right will just stand out like that. It'll be so easy to spot it. But if you're stuck in a room looking at a LCD monitor, your sense of judgment will disappear and you'll realise that you just can't make a judgment. So I'll pull it back to monochrome and then slide it back up until it looks right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you use a simulator or white area around your screen still? That's... I haven't seen one, I haven't seen one of those in 20 years. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, as long as, again, you know that that white is correct. Um, these days, the grey surround in the interface kind of does that job for you. Um, which is why it's critical to make sure your LCDs are set up right. Or your broadcast monitor. But there's no, I think it's, it makes sense to have that. However, it was, again, that was one of those things that people did for a while and then it kind of dropped out of popularity. Probably because people didn't want to... Um, spend the money building them <laughs> because they've got to be backlit and all that kind of stuff. You can't use paper. You've got to have a properly, proper lit surface there. It's got to be illuminated. You can't just have a passive thing because then it bec it's reflecting the colour of the ambient light you're under. Um, fluorescent tubes are a major problem if you're grading. Try not to work under a fluorescent light. Natural daylight's better. Um, again, it's to do with the nature of fluorescent light being a very narrow spectrum in a sort of green-purple area. And um, same kind of problem grading as you, you get when people shoot under fluorescent lights. It's, it's probably the only lighting you can't correct successfully because it's a very narrow spectrum light. And the colours that you're trying to pull back just aren't in the signal. So, um, yeah, try and stay away from fluorescent lighting where possible. Uh, so yeah, I'd bring that up to a kind of saturation point that I think looked reasonably natural and, and then move on with it. Now, 
if the camera was set up fairly consistently, which it kind of was on this shoot, we've got some nice little buttons on the colour corrector which make our work very easy. And these are these little one and two buttons up here and the little icon with the hand. I mean, I know a lot of people will know this already, but you can drag that filter down to another clip and drop it on there. Uh, I accidentally copied it. But you don't have to, you can just copy the filter forward to the next clip on the timeline. It copies it to the, next, the same track. Bang, so I click that. Now that one, and double click that to bring it up into the viewer, we've got a copy of that colour corrector, which I can then, I'm, you know, if, if the shoot was consistent, I'm in the ballpark now, I'm close. So I can now do some fine tweaks on this one. So same thing, I can go and get the white point, find something that I think is white in the image and grab it. It probably wasn't white. <laughs> but you've, got to, you've just got to trust your judgment when you're dealing with this stuff.